I would like to uh, thank the organizers for having me presenting my data today. Uh, my name is René Hogus. I work at uh, Kijin as a scientist. And Kijin is a crop innovation company with a, uh, with a headquarters in Wageningen, the Netherlands, and a subsidiary in the US and an office in India. We work in, in crops, in plants, uh, which are vegetables, field crops, ornamentals, and commodity crops. Our uh, research is divided in several platforms. Uh, the platform I will be talking today, uh, the research I've performed in there, is the Genome Insights platform. And it uh, delivers uh, cutting edge technologies for a strong genomic and genetic understanding of crops of interest. And why would we like to develop targeted sequencing? Well, there's a long standing need for cost effective screens in for causative mutations linked to traits of interest. And we set ourselves a few uh, guidelines. Uh, the technology should be working on native DNA, so no amplification involved. And as such, it would also enable base modification detection. Should be cost effective, should be robust, and uh, also flexible in, in all kinds of ways. So in times of samples, number of load size, and the target region size. Well, our TARSI project te technology uh, has mainly six steps. The first step is, of course, isolating high molecular weight DNA. Uh, then uh, target using CRISPR complexes to target the load side. Those CRISPR complexes will uh, be directed by guide RNAs to the regions of interest. Once they are there, they will cut the DNA um, and then subsequently all off targets will be removed by action nuclease treatment. After this, the proteins are removed the uh, remaining DNA is purified and the Oxford Nanopore library preparation is performed. And in, ultimately, in the end, the DNA is sequenced through nanopores. In our proof of concept experiment, we used 19 melon lines. Uh, melon has a approximately genome size of 450 megabase pairs. And in our experiments, we also added artificial heter heterozygotes which are a mixture of two known uh, cultivars. This because most of the cultivars are homozygous and we would also like to see if we could detect heterozygous positions in our experiment. In the total experiment, we have, we've targeted 814 loci of approximately five kilobases per locus. Uh, in total, we used 3000 guide RNAs. Sequencing was performed uh, using the Prometheans uh, platform. And uh, from the total output, we only used those reads that mapped uniquely to the reference genome that we have obtained. And in the right panel, you can see the number of reads that we obtained for each of the samples. And just to note that the samples that we uh, pooled, actually there was no uh, um, uh, alternation uh, for the concentrations of the different samples. So you see quite a bit difference between the different samples. After mapping the reads, uh, we've binned the average read sequence read coverage for the different loci. And as you can see, there are a few loci that have extreme high coverage. The majority of the reads uh, load side have approximately 10 to 40x uh, coverage per, of, of reads uh, at the uh, targeted load side. In this uh, slide, I show uh, on the right, I show an example of a locus that has a very nicely uh, targeted enrichment. In the bottom, you can see the target region that was targeted and the guides that were designed surrounding this target locus. And you can see there's this really distinct uh, boundary of reads uh, mapping to our target locus, which exemplifies that the, the CRISPR complex 
actually really cuts the DNA at those positions and also uh, protects the DNA from degradation. Uh, as you can see that the off targets and uh, the flanking sequences are much less uh, present. So overall, we obtained for the uh, 814 loci an average for the enrichment of six, of, of over six. 80% uh, of the loci were actually detected with almost eight coverage or more. And the average reads percentage on target was 13% of the reads that were mapped uniquely to our target load sign. In this slide, I show an example of that we are actually able to detect SNPs and heterozygote positions uh, within our targeted load size and the uh, ONT uh, nanopore reads. In the top two uh, are the sample of the lines for cultivar one, it's a duplicate actually, which are uh, act, or, um, the same as the reference sequence. Cultivar two is a deviating from the reference sequence, as you can see in uh, by the colored nucleotide positions uh, in this uh, read. In the bottom two is a duplicate of a mixture of both cultivars. And there is nicely to see that at the SNP position, uh, there's a nice, uh, both nucleotides or both alleles are present in this cultivar. So heterozygotes, we can definitely uh, discriminate. What also can be seen, it's maybe a little bit more difficult, but the deviating nucleotides or alleles are in the same read uh, within the uh, mixed cultivar. So as such, we can also detect haplotypes within our samples and the targeted load zone. Besides SNPs, we can also detect structural variants. And in this case, I show an example where cultivar one, which is uh, matching the reference sequence, cultivar two has a distinct one kilobase uh, deletion uh, at, this, at this position. The mix of both cultivars shows a very nice uh, <clears throat> reduced coverage uh, resulting from the heterozygote uh, position in this mixed cultivar. As such, also heterozygote structural variants can be easily targeted. So to conclude on this targeted sequencing uh, technology, we can 80% of the load side can be genotyped. And as genotyping, we call that we have a certain coverage. We can detect SNPs and structural variants, uh, as I've shown in, our, in my examples. But for nanopore and demultiplexing can be performed uh, very nicely. And uh, we have used now 19 samples out of a kit of 24 barcodes, but actually Oxford Nanopore now already has the kit for 96 barcodes. As such, we could also increase the number of samples that we've now performed in multiplex. And uh, in the first one of the first slides, you could see that besides the 19 samples, also the five non-used barcodes from the 25 barcode kit were uh, illustrated. And there was very little reads uh, present there. As such, Crosstalk to unused barcodes is really minimal. An alternative way, besides the wet lab uh, uh, option for targeted sequencing, as I've shown before, uh, just, just in a few slides before, yours, there's also a hardware-based read-until uh, target enrichment. This read-until is developed by the Matt Luce lab. It's also known as adaptive sequencing, and recently renamed to read fish. And it actually does real-time selection of sequencing reads. And with this, each fragment that is sequenced through a nanopore, it's in the first 500 to 1,000 base pairs that it is determined if this first 500 to 1,000 base pairs is actually in the sub-targeted region, the read, the, the area of interest, or if it's not. If it's in the region of interest, the fully fragment will be sequenced. 
In our case, the full 7 KB fragment will be sequenced. If it's off target, only the first 500 to 1000 base pairs will be sequenced, then the voltage will be reversed and the fragment will be ejected from the pore and the next fragment can be sequenced. So we've done this uh, in an ex initial experiment where we used uh, just a standard whole genome sequencing library from a metal line and selected for the 814 load psi that I've shown in the previous slides. The results that we obtained were that uh, with a standard run, we had an average uh, target depth of around 32. Running the same library uh, using the read until uh, application, the average depth on target just slightly increases. But what is more strikingly is that the average depth just off target, which the whole genome, is reduced from th almost 30x coverage to uh, just above 4x coverage in the read until. And this illustrates that just in our first experiment, we were able to enrich uh, for the 814 target load psi uh, eightfold in our uh, just whole genome sequencing uh, library prep. This is, a cover, this is an overview of the average read coverage that we obtained when looking at the after the read until application. And what can be seen is that the average read coverage is almost equal across all load side. There are a few that have a, a very low coverage and there are a few that have very high coverage. But in general, the average coverage that we obtained was roughly between 25 and 40 X. But then we thought, well, maybe we can combine both applications. Let's say first a wet lab approach in enriching and then a further enrichment using the read until uh, sequencing application. So we performed both runs, just a standard targeted sequencing approach run and we had the same library also run and using the read until application. Um, and with this, uh, actually, the, the most striking result was is that with the targeted sequencing approach, we had an enrichment of ninefold almost. But when applying the, the read until application, this increases dramatically to a 15 fold enrichment, which is uh, extremely nice. In our experiments in, uh, that, that I'm just explaining now, we use 19 samples, the same as the ones that I've used in the first slides. And looking at all the enrichment uh, over the different samples, we can see that the uh, enrichment fold is almost equal. There are no real samples that are lower or higher expressed, uh, uh, enriched. And also the difference between using only the TAR-seq enrichment, which is resulting in approximately 9x, uh, nine-fold uh, enrichment, it all, all samples are, when using the read until application, enriched to over 50 to 60-fold uh, in coverage. So to conclude, conclude is that our target uh, sequencing approach uh, really results in a substantial enrichment of the targeted load psi. When uh, combining targeted sequencing and read until, the tar seq really uh, boosts the read until target enrichment, in this case by sixfold. What we also see is that variant calling of complex, complete target regions is possible. So now I show SNPs and structure variant. But besides this, also base modifications can be detected. It's not shown here, but in the field, uh, there are many tools available to look for base modifications in the raw reads of the nanopore. An outlook for what we are going to do besides this is to extend this target TASIC uh, experiment to more complex genomes and also much more challenging regions. And uh, if you're interested, Kijin is open for collaboration on this or other fields. 
With this, I would like to acknowledge, uh, actually, there are many people that I would like to acknowledge within the team members uh, at Keygen. Uh, two of them I highlighted here. Alexander is one of our uh, well-known uh, Oxford Nanopore uh, users, and Dick is uh, having the research that I'm presenting. Uh, Matt Luce is the developer, uh, together with Alexander Payne, and they've also presented the first results in their uh, publications. And we really have to thank them for setting up the Read Until application at Keygene and giving us some indications to improve this further. And uh, furthermore, the Oxford Nanopore Technology Support Team is really helping us with uh, issues and providing us with the newest uh, applications. And with this, I would like to thank you and take any questions.